Hey everyone, Harlan Kilstein here, and we're up to day 14. It's two weeks. And today we're going to do something that's important for you. And what we're going to talk about is facing your financial fears. Now, I don't know if you know, but there are a lot of people running around in an absolute state of panic because of the state of the economy. You know, we have never been exposed to so many thieves in one succession, one right after the other. First, there were the mortgage brokers. They were the ones who promised everybody, oh sure, you can afford the house of your dreams. They didn't tell everybody that the mortgage rates were going to go up and be jacked up artificially so people would lose their homes. Now they gave mortgages to people who couldn't afford even the mortgages that they got, even at the lower rate. They were in such a rush to get that commission that they pushed mortgages out there. Those were called junk mortgages. And then they turned around and polished those mortgages, those junk mortgages up so shiny, made them smell like they were from the Hamptons or, or, or Rodeo Drive, and the banks sold them to other people, and then the whole house of cards came out. And then we have gangsters like Madoff in New York, who is accused of embezzling 50 billion dollars. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't have any money with Bernard Madoff. But still, people are in shock and talking about it because there are people out there who lost all their money. And so people are operating in a state of financial fear. People have lost substantial amounts of money in their portfolios. And people don't know what's going to be in the future. And so what they're doing, the time-honored response is to do the turtle response. Put your head and your legs inside your shell and pretend that nothing's going on. It's not a very useful way of behaving. What you really need to do is to get yourself into a peak state. This is what I talk about in Physiology of Excellence. Getting yourself into a peak state so you can do anything. But today, I'm going to work with you on just one aspect of changing your state. The most powerful way of changing your state is to do one thing guaranteed to work, and that is change your breathing. There'll be a new program coming out in a couple of weeks, maybe in a couple of months, called Breakthrough Breathing, which is going to talk a lot more about designing your state just through breathing, but today, I want to talk to you about getting a hold of your breathing. Now for most people, almost all people, breathing is something that takes place other than consciously. There isn't a little voice inside of you going, inhale, exhale, inhale. You just do it. Because otherwise you'd be going, shut up up there, I heard you the last time. But you are breathing, and you're breathing all of the time. But the truth of the matter is, most of us breathe at only a tiny fraction of our capacity to breathe. And as soon as you begin breathing more fully, your state changes. Let me give you an example. And you can do this along with me. I don't believe anybody's watching you. If they are, just smack them. That's what I would tell my son. But don't, don't pay any attention to them. What I'd like you to do is think of something that you're nervous or upset about. Maybe it's, is there enough money coming in? Are you going to be able to pay your bills? Really, get into that state good. And then, with me, breathe in to a count of four. When you've breathed in to a count of four, hold it to a mental count of two. So it would look like this, breathing in for four and then holding it for two. 
and then breathe out for six. Now I know it's really unlikely that anyone out there typically breathes like that. So what it does is it puts up a big red stop sign. No, it's not on my hand this time. A big red stop sign that interrupts the pattern. And breathing is such a powerful pattern that it creates a new and different state. Now imagine if you halt the old pattern, the dysfunctional pattern, the pattern that is not useful to you, the pattern of worry, and you replace it with a more powerful pattern, a powerful pattern where you are in control. That's what physiology of excellence is about. But for now, you can do this breathing. Remember, in for four, hold for two, out for six. Now I assure you that no one has died from breathing in that fashion. If, if you do die from breathing in that fashion, send me a note and I'll give you back the money that you came for coming to visit my blog. Seriously folks, sometimes if you have a pattern going, the best thing you can do is interrupt it. Let me tell you a story. I learned this one from Dr. Dobson. My wife has a f friend who's paranoid schizophrenic. Makes life really interesting because she's always raging about something and so forth. One day she called up and she was all upset telling me that the police were spying on her or something like that. And I said to her over the phone, you know, no one has sung, I've been working on the railroad to me today. And she said, what? She, and then she started telling me the thing again, her whatever her craziness was. And I said, no one has sung, I've been working on the railroad today. And I said, I'll listen to you after you sing. So she began to say the words, and then she started singing. And I said, okay, now how many times are you going to do the chorus, two or three? She said, two. And she sang the chorus, and I said, okay, now what was it you wanted to tell me? She didn't remember. I wonder how that happened. If you see a pattern, interrupt it. We'll be back tomorrow.